Welcome to another Drug Chug episode. Let's talk about metformin and how it works, plus some pharmacology. Here's everything we'll talk about, timestamps down below, plus a short quiz at the end. Let's have a quick overview of metformin before we really dive into the details. We'll start with this whole glucose process, because metformin primarily helps with our glucose control, our blood sugar control. So first, we got to understand that anytime you have glucose intake, so let's say chocolate chip cookies, we're going to have glucose be absorbed into our bloodstream. This glucose is energy for all of our tissues and cells, but the glucose can't get into the cells without insulin. And insulin is a hormone that's secreted by the pancreas. As you consume more and more glucose, your pancreas is going to secrete more and more insulin so all that glucose can actually enter our tissues and cells and give them that energy. Metformin has a role in this process because metformin is primarily used for type 2 diabetes. We'll talk about this more in detail, but basically what's happening is you have way too much glucose in your system and over the years, your body becomes resistant to having the glucose enter these cells, right? There's so much glucose that it takes even more insulin for it to open the cell and absorb the glucose. A key note here is that metformin only works in type 2 diabetics. Because of this resistance, metformin can help us through its various mechanism of action, which we'll get into as well. But what about type 1 diabetes? Well, metformin is not used here. And the reason it's not used here is because there's a different issue. In type 1 diabetes, it's usually an autoimmune disease where it actually attacks your pancreas and it damages the pancreas. And remember, the pancreas releases insulin. So the beta cells in the pancreas are actually damaged and they can't release insulin or they can't release enough insulin. And because of these different issues, it would make sense that we use different drugs for these different types of diabetes. So type 1 diabetes, autoimmune issue, the pancreas is damaged, it's not releasing insulin. Type 2 diabetes, pancreas is fine, it's pushing out insulin, but the body is just resistant to using the insulin because there's so much glucose. Because of that type 2 diabetes insulin resistance issue, that's where metformin comes in. Now we can talk about how metformin helps with type 2 diabetic patients. It actually helps in three different ways. First, it actually decreases glucose production. Your liver has the ability to produce glucose and to push out glucose. And when metformin is absorbed into your bloodstream, it goes to your liver and it decreases this process. It tells your liver to stop making or reduce making glucose so that there is less glucose in your bloodstream. Number two, it actually helps decrease glucose absorption. So as you consume more and more cookies, carbs, whatever it may be, Metformin actually stops the absorption of that glucose in your stomach lining. And number three, it actually increases the insulin sensitivity. So metformin, as you use it, it actually helps promote your cells and insulin to be linked together so that the glucose can enter the cells. So a patient that is type 2 diabetic we can see how metformin will help in every single branch of this process. You're decreasing your liver from making glucose. You're decreasing the amount of glucose your body's absorbing. And then you're also increasing and helping that insulin sensitivity so that insulin will work. So now that we know how metformin works, when do we use this? We already touched on this. We use it in type 2 diabetic patients. It's actually a first-line medication when a patient becomes a type 2 diabetic. Remember, do not use this in type 1. Only use this in type 2. Metformin can actually be also used off-label for something called PCOS in women. It's polycystic ovarian syndrome where cysts are growing on the ovaries. 
And it's been shown that metformin actually helps reduce the cyst production. But majority of the time, when you see metformin, it's for type 2 diabetes. It's a staple in that disease state. It's the first line use. It works very well. So majority of the time, metformin, type 2 diabetes. Now that we know when to use metformin, let's talk about the dosing. When dosing for type 2 diabetes, you always want to start with 500 milligram daily. This is the typical starting dose. Some patients will go a little bit faster than this, but it's safer to just start at the 500 milligram. And then after a week, we want to increase it by 500 milligrams. And the ideal dose is 1,000 milligrams twice a day. Now, this isn't set in stone. You can actually go above that a little bit. Every patient is different. Every situation is different. But primarily, this is the regimen we see. This is the regimen that patients start on. One thing I do want to note, there are some caveats. If a patient's GFR is less than 30, so their kidney function is somewhat poor, you cannot use metformin. It's contraindicated. You also always want to take it with food. Metformin causes a lot of GI issues. So bloating, cramps, diarrhea, belching. There's a lot of GI upset when you take metformin. That's why if you take it with food, it'll help mitigate some of those side effects. And that's also why we start with a low dose. If you start with a 500 milligram, you'll get less of those GI side effects. The max dose that's recommended is 2,550 milligrams in a day. That is the absolute max. If you go anything over that, you don't really see much benefit and you open yourself to more side effects. You can also give metformin as a daily instead of splitting it up. But remember, if you split it up, it'll help mitigate those GI side effects. And to help with the daily dosing, it also comes in a XL formation, meaning long acting. So this one you only take once a day and it'll slowly release over time to help reduce those GI symptoms. So let's talk a little bit more about these side effects. So the first one, we kind of went into detail, is that GI upset. Again, we start with a low dose, take it with food, it'll help mitigate those GI side effects. But one thing to note is after about a week, two weeks, patients usually are able to tolerate and all of these GI side effects usually go away. This isn't something that's going to happen throughout the entire course of taking metformin. It's usually just in the beginning. The second, we have a lactic acidosis black box warning. This is because of the older biguanides, which is the class for metformin, and you rarely ever see it with metformin, but it has to be on the labeling. And basically, it has a potential to cause lactic acid buildup in your muscles. And the last thing is vitamin B12 deficiency. Remember, we said that metformin, when you take it, it helps reduce the absorption of glucose. So it unfortunately also reduces the absorption of B12. So patients that are low in B12 may see more deficiencies, or if a patient was perfectly fine, they might see B12 deficiencies, which could lead to anemias. But overall, this is an easy fix, right? Just you could take a vitamin B12 supplement separated from the metformin. So let's do a quick summary of everything we retained. We talked about metformin and how it's primarily used in type 2 diabetes. And the reason for that is because these patients have an insulin resistance issue. It is not used for type 1. We talked about the process of how your pancreas releases insulin so that glucose plus the insulin could get into your cells and tissues to give them energy. We talked about the mechanism of action and the three different ways metformin works. It lowers your hepatic creation of glucose. It lowers your absorption of glucose. And it also increases the insulin sensitivity of your cells. It's used primarily in type 2 diabetes, like we kept saying. You do see an off-label for patients that have PCOS, 
And we had a target dose of 2,000 milligrams in a day, but it is patient specific. But a max dose for everybody at 2,550 milligrams in a day. And then we also talked about some of the side effects, like that GI upset, that black box warning for lactic acidosis, and then B12 deficiency. So that's everything. Let's take a short quiz to see what we retained. What is the black box warning for metformin? What is the max dose for metformin? Which indication is metformin used for? Which is not one of the mechanisms that metformin utilizes to decrease blood glucose levels?